begin using Snort, you will have to download the actual IEDS application from its official webpage, which is www.snort.org. Once you're there, click on Get Started. And under the Windows tab, there is a link to the latest version of Snort, which is 2972. So go ahead, click on that link. I already have it downloaded. And while that download is going on, you may scroll up and click on Rules. As you can see, I am already logged on, and this gives me access to the registered rules on Snort, which is free if you have an account on Snort. Go ahead and download the latest version of the Snort Rules Snapshot, which is also version 2972. Another software that you need to download before you begin using Snort is WinPCAP. You will be able to download this on www.winpcap.org, and the latest version as of today is 4.1.3. Now that we have everything downloaded, we can go ahead and start installing Snort. So you have to install first the WinPCAP application. But once you've done that, we can double click on this installer and start installing Snort. Click on I agree. Next. And next, we're choosing the C drive as our Snort folder. Close and click on OK. Now we have to extract the rules from the zip file that we downloaded from the web page earlier. Double click on rules and extract these rules to the rules folder in our snort folder in our C drive. So click OK. We will do the same with the other two folders in the zip file. Preproc rules extract to the same folder in snort preproc rules okay you have to click yes to all since we're overriding the outdated files on that folder and now it's time that we extract the configuration files from the etc folder to the etc folder in our snort folder here we go click on okay again click yes to all to overwrite the outdated files in that folder and now we have our rules updated. Now that we have Snort and our rules installed, we can go to the C drive, into the Snort folder, and into the etc folder where our configuration files can be found. So let's right click on snort.conf and edit it with Notepad++, but if you don't have Notepad++, any text editor will do. So let's start by editing the configurations of Snort to make it work the way we want it to. Let's scroll down and let's first set our home network. Right now it's set to any, but we have to set that to the IP address that we are currently using. So by running the ipconfig command on the command prompt, I know that my IP address is 192.168.8.101. So I will type that in here. 192.168.8.101 slash 24 since it's a slash 24 IP address. Let us also set our external network into anything that isn't our home network. So the exclamation point stands for not. Now that we've done that, we will also need to define the directory for our rules and preproc rules folder. Let's scroll down a bit and here at line 104, we will have to change this into the absolute path that will bring us to the rules folder. Now we have to comment out the SO rule path, which we don't need since uh, shared objects don't run on Windows. But for the preproc rule path, we have to do the same thing as we did with the rule folder. Snort preproc underscore rules. Now we have to set our whitelist paths. It's basically just the same thing. They will be in our Snort rules folder. And just copy that down here. Yeah. 
Next, we have to enable our log directory so that we can store logs in our log folder. Let's scroll down a bit and on line 182, we know that it's been commented out. So let's take that hash symbol away and type in the absolute path to our log directory, which is C snort log. Basically, what we're doing here is that we're setting the paths to most of our folders. Now we will set the path to our dynamic preprocessors and dynamic engines. At line 243, let's change this to C snort live or lib snort underscore dynamic Processor. We'll do the same thing for the dynamic engine. C snort live snort underscore dynamic engine. SF underscore engine dot DLL. For the dynamic rules libraries, we'll have to comment that out with a hash symbol. Now let's set our reputation preprocessors. Let's scroll down a bit. Let's comment these out as well since inline packet normalization doesn't work on Windows. Here are a list of the preprocessors that Snort is currently using, so we'll just leave most of that the way it is. Let's scroll down to the reputation preprocessors. So we'll just change the name of the file since whitelist, blacklists aren't actually rules, they're just lists of IP addresses that we're listing as white or black, so that depends. Now we go to step 7. Just leave most of this the way it is and we will have to change all of these backslashes to forward slashes control F replace this with this and replace Let's do the same for step 8 with the pre proper path. Click on X and we will uncomment these out since we need them. And now that we've done that, let's scroll down and see if threshold.conf is included. Since it is, let's just go ahead and click on save, save our changes. Picking up from where we left off, if you noticed, we changed lines 506 and 507 from whitelist.rules and blacklist.rules to just white.list and black.list. The reason for this is because they aren't actually rules, but just lists of IP addresses that we whitelisted and or blacklisted. Right now, these files don't exist in our rule path, which is why we have to create them manually. So let's press on Control N 
while we're doing the pad and let's create those files. Since I don't have any IP addresses at the moment, I'll just put a comment saying white listed IPs. File, save as. Save that in the rules folder as white.list, as it says so on line 506, and change the format to all types. Click save. Let's do the same thing for black.list. Black listing IPs. Control S. Black dot list. Now that we have our white dot list and black dot list files, we can continue testing Snort to check if it has been properly installed. Now it's time to test if Snort actually works. So I'm going to open my command prompt as an administrator. And we will have to change the directory to the bin folder of snort. From there, let's run the executable file, snort space hyphen capital letter B, just to see if it's installed, and it is. Version 2.9.7.2 is installed on this computer. Now to check the interfaces from which we will be testing snort. So that's snort space hyphen capital letter W. From here, we see that we have three interfaces to choose from. Let's try testing out the first one by typing snort space hyphen i space one space hyphen c and the path where we saved our configuration file. etc snort.conf space hyphen capital letter T just to check if our configuration is valid. It's currently initializing the rule chains. And Snort has successfully validated the configuration. Now to actually test the functionalities of Snort. To test if Snort is able to detect the packets that come through the network, we will conduct a ping test. To do that, we will have to write our own rules at the rules folder. So to get there, we have to click on C drive, snort, rules, and look for local.rules. Right click and edit with notepad++. As you can see, there aren't any rules here yet, so we'll have to fill this in with our own rules. I will go ahead and type in alert. ICMP any any arrow to the right any any and it will display this message when it detects an ICMP packet testing ICMP semicolon and let's give this an SID of one zero 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 Close that with the parentheses. We will do the same thing with the two other protocols for TCP and UDP. So let's just copy this and paste on the next line. This time for TCP. And 
change this to 002. And again for UDP. Let's give this an SID of 003. Let's save what we have and test if snort has followed the rules that we stated. I'll change my directory again to the bin folder snort. Run the executable file hyphen W. Let's test out the third interface and check if it receives the packets that goes through the network. So let's type in snort space hyphen I three space hyphen C and the path to the configuration file that we edited earlier today. Snort.conf space hyphen A console and let's redirect the results of this command to a text file in our log folder. So let's do that. Let's type in snort log ping test dot text and enter. It will take a while. It is now processing the packets. Press on Control C. And check the log folder for the results of the scan. these results that Snort was able to detect the TCP and UDP packets that went through the network. It had the SIDs that we set up for them and the message that we said they should display. So this was a successful ping test. The last test that we will be conducting on Snort to test its functionalities is the port scan test. So in order to enable that, we will have to edit the snort.conf file in the etc folder. So this is the snort.conf file, but to get there, all you have to do is click on drive C, snort, and the etc folder. It's right here, right click, and edit with notepad++. Now we're skipping to line 413. We have to remove the hash symbol so that it's not commented out. This is the preprocessor that's responsible for the port scans. So let's just put in a backslash right here. Enter the tab. The protocol to follow is all. We have to remove this and type in scan underscore type space curly bracket port scan enter sense level medium we will also need to add the backslashes here at the end to indicate that it's the continuation of the line before it now that we've done that let's click on the save button just to make sure that we've saved all the changes that we did 
in snort.conf. Now it's time to edit local rules once again. Let's go back to snort, open rules, and right click on local.rules to add another rule that will help us know it scans ports. So right below, I'm going to add this rule, alert space TCP dollar sign external underscore net space any and arrow to the right dollar sign home underscore net any displaying this message it says TCP port scan commencing semicolon and the SID one zero 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 four. Closing parentheses. Let's go ahead and click the save button on that as well. Now let's try running it on the command prompt. In order to do this, I will have to use the application nmap on a different computer in the same local network. Nmap is an application that will scan the ports of the IP address that I provide. So, opening another laptop, I will be typing Nmap and the IP address of the network of this computer. So again, I am using a different computer at the moment. Nmap. 192.168.8.101 So, I won't press enter, but I will type something in this computer, which is the same command that we entered just now. But instead of ping test, I will type in port scan dot text just so that I know these are the results of the port scan test that I did. So I'll click on enter. And while that's running, I am going to click enter on this other computer to check if Nmap will scan the ports. It will take some time before we see the results, but later on when we open the text file and the log folder, we'll be able to see if the port scan was documented. It is now commencing the packet processing. Results may or may not show on the console, but they will definitely pop up in the text file we put in the log folder. Nmap is a is an open source application that you can download off www.nmap.org, and like Snort, it helps detect intrusions and it is helpful when simulating attacks. So if you want to download that as well, you can, but then you'd have to install it on a different computer or in a virtual machine network so that you'll see and simulate the attack for yourself. So I'm guessing that the packet processing is enough. I'll press Ctrl C to stop it. And let's check the log folders if the results we wanted to see 
as you can see, the message that we wanted to pop up, TCP port scan commencing, is here. It means that it was able to successfully detect the port scan that Nmap did from this other computer. And that concludes this group's demonstration on how to install, configure, and test Snort as an intrusion detection system on a Windows computer.